Hey there, YouTube fam. Get ready for a wild ride back to the 1970s with the highly controversial but undeniably successful, Fly Me Ad campaign. We're diving deep into the scandalous world of airline advertising, where sex appeal and controversy collided. Picture this, it's the swinging 70s, and airline companies are taking their ad campaigns to new heights. Beyond the regular duties of stewardesses, they're using the sexual appeal of their sky girls to create captivating and often racy advertisements. One campaign that caused a major stir was the infamous Fly Me campaign launched by National Airlines. Created by the advertising agency Wells Rich Green, this campaign pushed the boundaries with its sexually suggestive slogans and imagery. The first print advertisement featured a close-up of Cheryl Fioravant, a freckle-faced stewardess with a boyish coiffure, flashing an innocent smile. In bold letters, the ad read, Hi, I'm Cheryl. Fly me, talk about grabbing attention. But that was just the beginning. Subsequent ads invited travelers to fly other fresh-faced stewardesses, enticing the male demographic and positioning National Airlines as a desirable and upscale brand. Now, here's where things get juicy. The innuendo-laden campaign cost National Airlines a whopping $9 million a year on ads. But guess what? It paid off big time. The company saw a significant increase in bookings and brand awareness. Of course, not everyone was thrilled about the campaign. The National Organization for Women, now, raised their voices, calling the ad sexist and accusing them of turning flight attendants into a flying meat market. They even protested outside the office of F. William Free, the advertising executive behind the campaign. But despite the controversy, the campaign continued to soar. In 1972, more ads were published, including another one featuring our girl Cheryl, proudly proclaiming, millions of people flew me last year. Love it or hate it, these ads were effective in reaching their target audience and grabbing the nation's attention. Fast forward to today, and the Fly Me campaign is still talked about in advertising and marketing classes. It's become a case study of a successful, yet controversial, ad campaign that pushed boundaries and sparked conversations. However, let's not ignore the negative effects. Critics argue that the campaign reinforced the objectification of women and promoted an outdated idea of femininity. It perpetuated the notion that women were mere objects to be desired and looked at. And that's not all. The campaign also faced backlash for promoting hedonistic consumerism, suggesting that happiness and fulfillment could be bought through material goods and services. It's a dark side to the glitz and glamour of the 70s. But here's the real eye-opener, these vintage photos from the Fly Me campaign reveal just how far airlines went to market their flights. The bodies of women flight attendants became integral to their marketing strategy, promising an exciting and even erotic in-flight experience. Back in the post-war period, airlines needed to stand out from the competition. So, they focused on their flight attendants' looks and promised a glamorous journey. But behind the scenes, there were strict requirements for these sky goddesses. To be a flight attendant in those days, you had to be young, slender, unmarried, and white. Job ads even specified height, weight, and marital status. It was a different time, indeed. Stewardess schools, often referred to as charm farms, taught women how to exercise, walk in high heels, and style their hair and makeup to perfection. It was all about maintaining that glamorous image. But the transformation didn't stop there. Airlines like Braniff International took it to the next level in 1965, introducing high fashion uniforms and even in-flight clothing changes. Talk about a fashion show in the sky. As the women's rights movement gained momentum in the 70s, the objectification of stewardesses faced criticism. The Stewardesses for Women's Rights Feminist Group was founded, and airlines began hiring male cabin crew members. Thankfully, times have changed. Discriminatory practices were challenged in court, and regulations were gradually eliminated. The weight restrictions, the last barrier, were relaxed in the 1990s. So, 
Buckle up and get ready to explore the scandalous world of the Fly Me ad campaign. These vintage photos will take you back to a time when controversy and success collided in the skies. Let's dive in.